In this Learning Byte for Windows Small Business Server 2011, we'll take a look at licensing. So this is the second in a four-part series, and today we'll look specifically at client access licenses and access rights. So for the SPS 2011 family, there are some different CAL requirements and availability for each of the products. For SPS 2011 Essentials, you do not actually need CALs at all. You may simply use up to 25 user accounts in the Essentials environment. Now for Standard and the Premium add-on, this follows the CAL model that you may be more familiar with with Windows Server itself and previous editions of SPS. The server license will be bundled with five CALs through all the channels, whether that's volume licensing, OEM, OEM System Builder, and also FPP, or the Retail Channel. There's also a number of different CalPak options available. So through the Retail Channel, you can obtain 5 and 20 CalPaks. OEM offers 1 and 5 CalPaks, and then Volume Licensing offering all of them 1, 5, or 20 CalPaks. There are some additional Cal requirements to be aware of when you're using SBS 2011. So first, if you want to use the Rights Management Services functionality, you will need to purchase additional RMS CALs. Also for remote desktop services, you will need RDS CALs for each user or device to access a server to host a graphical user interface. So this is basically using a remote desktop session host. Now on the Essentials and Standard uh, Server, RD session host is disabled. Although those uh, servers do use other components of remote desktop, they can't be used for presentation virtualization. In contrast, the premium add-on enables all of the remote desktop services features. So you can use this to uh, host desktops and provide all of the functionality uh, that you need. One thing that I wanted to point out is that accessing your licensed client computers via remote web access does not require an RDS CAL. So if you're using remote web access to remotely connect to your desktops in your SBS network, you don't need an RDS CAL to do that. So looking more closely at CALs, there are two different kinds of CALs that you can obtain, a device CAL or user CALs. It's strongly recommended that you select which CAL is going to be most appropriate for your environment and then just use that one type of CAL. So user CALs are assigned to individual users and each named user can then access your server from any device. Device CALs, on the other hand, are assigned to devices, and then any user can use that device to access the software. So there are two different CAL suites. The SBS 2011 CAL suite gives you access to the SBS 2011 standard server. Again, remember, Essentials doesn't use CALs. And the premium add-on CAL suite then grants you access rights to the premium add-on server. And you can have multiple premium add-on servers in your environment. When we look again at Essentials specifically, there are some rights and requirements that follow from the fact that it does not use CALs. So if you have a validly licensed copy of the premium add-on, then you don't need a CAL to access the instances of Windows Server 2008 R2 standard technologies in the premium add-on. So that is covered with your Essentials server license. However, if you have additional copies of Windows Server 2008 running in your SBS uh, domain, you will need CALs to access those instances. Now this is different from uh, SBS 2011 standard, which follows that traditional CAL model. And you can use the SBS 2011 CAL suite instead of Windows Server CALs to access instances of Windows Server in your SBS environment. Also, SPS 2011 standard includes Exchange Server 2010 standard. So you can use the SPS 2011 CAL suite instead of an Exchange Server 2010 standard CAL to access the base functionalities in the instances of Exchange Server standard or enterprise that you have in your SPS domain. Now, you do need enterprise CALs for Exchange if you want to access the enterprise functionality. So this is things like custom retention policies, personal archive, voicemail, and so forth. So again, the base functionalities are covered by the SBS CAL, but the enterprise functionalities require an Exchange Server Enterprise CAL. 
and then finally for the SPS 2011 premium add-on there are some additional Cal requirements so you do need a premium add-on Cal suite for each user or device that accesses that your instances of SQL Server in the small business environment. Now this Cal does grant you access to SQL Server 2008 R2 instances throughout your SPS 2011 domain. So this is kind of similar to being able to access additional instances of Windows Server when you have the SPS 2011 Cal suite. Keep in mind that the total number of premium add-on Cal's must not exceed 25 if you have the essential server and 75 if you have the standard server. So these must conform to the licensing maximums of the SPS software that you're running. And then also for the premium add-on, if you want to use rights management services or remote desktop services, you do need to purchase additional CALS for either RMS or RDS. So that's a quick look at CALS and access rights in the SPS 2011 environment. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join us for future Learning Byte videos.